I will. Um, I've got a fly buzzing around here like crazy. Annoying. All right. Well, we might as well get started. Um, if there's anyone else coming in, we'll, they'll get emailed this anyway. Um, so. That helps if I share my screen first. All right, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, Claire, you're driving, that's cool. Um, any questions you have, just shoot them through to me and we can go through them later. That's not a problem. Um, and we can yeah, just get started. So um, the reason why I've um, sort of gone down this route um, is because, is, you know, they say teach what you know. Um, and for me, I've done it all. I've had the ridiculously wrong relationships. I've been heartbroken. Um, I've been ghosted. I've been treated poorly. I've done it all. Um, and it's probably in the last 18 months that I've really um, learned a lot. And obviously, along with my feng shui, um, some tips and hints to um, change things up and actually bring people into your life that are worthy of you. Um, so that's what this is all about. Um, so tonight is about six tips to uh, make changes in your home that will um, change up energies and enable you to bring someone into your life with a little bit more ease um, rather than um, keep going down the same route um, because energetically we do need to make changes and we do to make um, you know make room for people in our lives um, each home is very different um, so these are very generic tips um, which would only be um, you know they're, they're fully implementable but having a full personal report on the home itself um, will give you the best possible results as well um, so as I said like I've I've experienced it all um, so who am I to be teaching this now well I guess because I'm coming from a place of experience, I haven't been married happily for 25 years, the same person and have all the, all the answers. I'm still learning. I'm still um, testing myself. I'm still, um, um, you know, a lot of stuff I do is test and measure and it's more on the emotional level as well, see where I'm, where I'm sitting. Um, but I've been working with Feng Shui for six years and I loved it that much. That's why I became a practitioner in it. Um, so in that time, I've had windfalls of, you know, a lot of money. Um, I've picked up jobs really easily um, and other opportunities have come to me that I was not expecting. Um, so it's feng shui is certainly for me um, a life changer and it will transform your life. Okay, so tonight we're going through six very simple things that you can do immediately for free um, and easily that will activate some positive love energies in your home. Um, so please do ask any questions that you may have. Um, I do want to, you know, help you as much as I can through this. And at the end, I've got a couple of offers. Um, just want to make sure it's okay if I chat to you about those. Um, you know, completely up to you what you do. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a program that I am about to run and I would love to help as many women as I can find their soulmate. All right. Um, and I do have a, a bonus there, just a little extra um, tip sheet that I will um, send you the link for for you to download. Um, just activate what we call the peach blossom in your home. And that's what um, brings in in particular love energies all right so for those of you who don't know um, what feng shui actually is um, feng means wind and shui means water um, which is basically ease and flow we want ease and flow in our life um, it's an ancient chinese discipline where the philosophy stems from the connection between the physical and the invisible unseen vibrational world um, 
and it's based, they've actually done a lot of scientific um, research on this. It's based on the laws of physics, um, natural cycles, common sense, and good design. Now, there are a number of different um, schools of feng shui. The one I practice in is uh, traditional or classical flying stars, which is based on the compass and it's based on um, where your home actually sits on the plot of land. So it's very specific and each home is very different. All right, so we harness and correct the energies in your home. Um, and then by doing that, we can make anything happen. It's a matter of setting the scene for success energetically. So that's how we make it help you find love with it. Okay, so each part of your home um, is what we call a gua. So there's nine guas in the home, um, each compass direction. So north, south, east, west, northwest, um, northeast, southwest, southeast. Um, the gua that we're actually going to be activating in this instance is the southwest, which is your love and relationships gua. Um, so your, your bedroom doesn't actually need to be in that particular area. Um, it's just part of the house. Um, we'll go into activating different parts of the house in a minute. But um, the southwest, like for example, majority of my southwest is actually missing. Um, and it has been missing in the last two houses I've lived in as well. Um, so as soon as I've activated it, things have happened um, to uh, actually end relationships. Um, and that's actually not a bad thing because they were toxic. So um, Feng Shui has an ability to, um, to push you to deal with stuff you're not dealing with um, or haven't dealt with and um, will either enhance it or it will, um, it will end things. And that's what happened for me, but I'm certainly not unhappy about it because, yeah, they, wouldn't, they were quite toxic situations to be in. All right, so let's get started. So I would um, love to know what the most difficult thing you're encountering around relationships is right now. Jeanette? Um, is it finding someone? Is it um, knowing what you want? Um, no idea? Mm. I'll chat. Oh. Knowing what you want. Okay, so you need a bit of clarity in... And it is very tricky. It's taken me a long time to um, to work out what I want for sure. So I get that. All right. So the first um, the first tip I've got hundred percent is decluttering. Now I know decluttering has um, you know with Marie Kondo it's it's very popular at the moment. You know declutter declutter. Decluttering by itself is not feng shui. However, the principles behind decluttering and changing the energies, um, it's the first thing that we will always recommend. Um, many homes, homes that I go to um, or I'm working with, um, they've got a lot of old stuff that's not serving them anymore. So it's impossible to bring new in um, when you've got a lot of old clutter sitting around. So, for example, if you've been married before and you've gotten divorced and you still have your wedding dress lying around, then that is going to be causing you an energetic block. Move it on. I can guarantee, um, and this is from experience with dealing with working with clients, um, your daughter is not going to be wanting that wedding dress when she gets married. It will be out of date. It will mean nothing to her. And certainly if you've had that wedding dress from a divorce, it's mm. got bad juju applied to it. So move it on. Mm. Anything relating to a life with your previous partner, if, if certainly if it was a, um, a non-amicable separation, move it on. So mm. I obviously last year went through a separation myself. I even got down to the point where I had an alarm clock sitting there that was my ex-husband's. It worked, it was fine, but I threw it out because it was his. 
So I got rid of it and I bought myself a new one. Um, I had a nice, beautiful carving, um, a couple carving that we sit on the bedside table. Again, I bought it on our honeymoon. So why would I keep that? It's got a bad memory attached to it. Um, it's not going to help me manifest and bring in um, the relationship I want because it's got other things attached to it. So move off anything that is related to um, previous relationships um, just to help with um, good energy flow. Hey, Steph. Okay, so um, this also goes through very basic things like um, a T-shirt, um, handkerchiefs, um, you know, socks, anything really relating to them, move them on. If you've got old journals that are um, sitting around, burn them, let them go, release them. It, it will just have this massive release and it's, it's creating space in your life to bring new in. These are old thoughts. We are changing thought patterns. We do not want to think that way anymore, especially with the journals. So move them on, burn them, throw them out. It's stuff. It's, it's holding you back. Move it on. Okay, so the, the second point we've got is imagery. Now, this is super, super important. Um, artwork is incredibly important. Um, and it sets a massive intention in your home on a number of different levels. So if you've got in your bedroom, uh, there was a story um, of a lady who was struggling to find a relationship and she had a, an image or a painting of Medusa in her bedroom. That's not so romantic. It's probably not something you'd want to have in your bedroom. You want to be able to create um, images of romance, of couples, um, of pairs that's that's what we're aiming for so images like this one where um, it's a couple embracing um, they're the sort of images you want to be putting in your in your home um, you don't want to be moving um, you know waterfalls or um, things with a really fiery colors in them it's generating a very um, like fire energy angry um environment and energy so you want to be moving those on as well um, keep things light in pairs and um, joyful for what you're wanting to bring into your relationship so for example here i've got two images um, one of a the beautiful both of them are beautiful pieces of art like the the pen the pen art one is of a single woman and then one is a couple so they're very similar in how they look but you can you can instantly see the difference between the two. So the one of the single woman, it's sad, it's lonely, it's certainly not something you'd want to have in your bedroom for sure. Um, whereas the the image of the couple is creating that um, the desire, the coupledom, um, and passion in that particular space. So just be really careful of the of the artwork that you have in um in your bedroom so in my bedroom i've got i've got I've my favorite artist she's an erotic painter like erotic artwork um it's all very tasteful but that's in my bedroom because that's what romance passion and the type of relationship that i want with my future partner that's what i want to have in the, in, in my in my future so that's the imagery that i have in my bedroom um the images and art and photos are incredibly powerful as to what the story they're telling. If you're wanting to bring in love, then ensure the imagery in your home reflects this. Artwork of single people, either male or female, is not encouraging a partnership. Imagery of single things is also not encouraging a partnership. Instead, change them out to include art or couple, images of couples or animals in pairs. So you might like, um, you know, there might be some artwork, really pretty artwork that you want in another part of your room that might have one bird in it. Just change it out or find something that's got say two birds in it because it's bringing in that extra person if you have um, things like hearts lying around um, make sure you've got two not just one because it's singular you want to be generating that that couple um, energy now the bed this is a really big one and it's a really big one for me um, the first thing i did when my ex-husband left is i bought brand new sheets brand new linens um, and cleaned out my bedroom. Um, I won't go into the sort of person he was, but it was not pretty when I came back to the house. Um, 
So I wanted to remove every um, every stroke of him, basically. Um, but I also wanted to create a space that was luxurious that um, would give me the um, experience that I wanted in my life. So you know, I'm not talking about spending, you know, thousands of dollars on Sheridan sheets, um, but buying yourself new linens or something you love to sleep in um, is certainly a way for you to then start building um, sort of an image of how you want a relationship to be. Um, I like all white. I've got all white linen. Um, you, know, you choose what you wish. So, yeah, new streets, creating luxury, so treating yourself, treating yourself how you want to be treated, basically. Um, the other things are matching bedside tables. So, so bedsides, bedside tables and lamps on each side, and you want to make sure that you can actually walk around the bed as well. So not you don't want the bed pushed up against the wall because that's stopping someone getting in it. So you want to push it, you know, make sure you've got enough room to walk around um around the bed so both both partners can access the bed equally absolutely Steph you should like you spend so much time in it why not spend a bit of money on it um you know I'm notoriously bad I I go and spend I buy a new doona cover probably every six months but I just like new things and I like making myself self feel good I said you spend so much time in the bed why not uh, yeah, so the bedside tables, make sure that they're, they're matching um, and you've got matching lamps as well. Um, and above the bed, don't recommend um, keeping any wall hangings above the bed. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, anything hanging over the bed can create a downward pressure. It can cause headaches. It can cause bad sleep, any number of things. So we don't recommend anything above the bed. Further on to that, You've got the risk it could fall on you in the middle of the night. So you certainly don't want that either. We also recommend that you have a um, um, a, a solid bed head, um, which will create um, stability in your relationship. Now, the placement of the bed, of, there's a lot of people that will, will come into your home and they want to do a feng shui consult and they'll freak out and say, oh, my God, we've got to change everything. We don't do that that way. Um, everything is fixable and we work with what we've got. So if you are able to put your bed against a wall, a solid wall, and you can only put it against the window, then that's what we work with. Um, but we do ask or do recommend that you have a solid headboard that sits behind it just to create some stability for you. So in the bedroom. Now, we're obviously wanting to bring in love here. We're wanting to welcome, we want to create the energy. So um, I don't know about you, but my wardrobe used to be chock block full of my stuff and there'd be no room for anybody else. We want to create room. So just ensure that you have it. You're not, you're not wanting someone to move in straight away. That's just not the intention of this at all. Um, but you want to leave a drawer empty um, so that they have energetically somewhere to put things. You know, the bedside table is the other thing. You know, you want that side of the bed empty so it's, that's their spot. Um, same in the wardrobe. Have some spare hangers just hanging there that you don't use. It's creating space for that person. When it comes to decorating, um, as I said before, um, any decorative, make sure you've got two of them. So if you're looking at, um, you know, putting things like hearts or um, any anything decorative, and the other things we put in a, um, a pair of mandarin ducks because they make for life. Um, images of swans, they also make for life. Um, peony roses, they are the rose for the flower of love. So you put some, you know, artwork with peonies on them. They will, um, they will be beneficial as well. Um, rose quartz hearts, another good thing to having. They, you know, they uh, represent love. Um, but anything you have, make sure you have two of them, um, not just one. So I have in my bedroom um, two rose quartz hearts, some mandarin ducks. I have my beautiful artwork. I have my bed. Um, 
I bought a new bed that was a very, very solid headbed on headboard on it. Um, you know, just to create, I guess, a boudoir. That's what you're wanting to create. You're wanting to welcome someone into your space. Under your bed, we certainly do not recommend leaving anything underneath your bed. Now, if you've got issues with storage, just be careful with what you actually put under there. So I wouldn't recommend putting shoes for a start. You're walking around in the shoes all day. You're collecting energies from who knows through the day. So put those in your wardrobe. Um, clothes, um, yeah, they're okay, but um, still you, you've, got, you've got emotions attached to them. Um, certainly if you have you still have your journals do not store them on underneath your bed now I can tell you a bit of a story about this um, for my personal um, experience um, my ex-husband took a long time to get his stuff to pick his stuff up um, and it was in a room underneath my bedroom I didn't even think about it but it took months and months and months and it wasn't until the night that the day had been gone, it had been picked up. Um, that's the best night's sleep I'd had in well over 12, 18 months um, because his stuff was gone. So I'd been sleeping on it literally, I mean, in the room underneath me. Um, and it was in basically an empty room. So there's nothing else in there except for his stuff. So that's, that's what I say. It, it, it's incredibly important. Um, it can make a massive difference. Um, as to what you've got underneath your bed. Uh, where possible, if you have a um, timber bed, that would be great, or an ensemble. Um, don't recommend um, metal beds because they can cause issues with sleep. Um, but yeah, anything, keepsakes, journals, anything from your past that's not benefiting you, um, love notes, what have you, move them on. Do not leave them underneath your bed because that's, definitely not going to be encouraging in your relationship and as I said with this um, solid headboard just make sure you have um, something to you know your head's up against instead of just an ensemble or even a mattress on the floor if that's what you're sleeping on um, yeah a solid headboard now this one here is a very, very big one. Um, many parent people have got children, they'll have images of their kids in their bedroom, um, which is sweet, it's, it's lovely. Um, but the bedroom is a place for romance, relaxation, sleep, passion, sex, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so as a, going back to the imagery, we were talking about before um, this sort of it's basically people looking on um, do you really want that do you want um, your children images in your bedroom same with um, you know photos of your parents or grandparents um, you probably don't want those in your bedroom either um, and also um, Oh dear, Steph, you had your relationship, you had a photo of your gran in the bedroom. Um, yeah, that, that would make a bit, bit of sense that you got blindsided. Absolutely. Um, then the same goes for any, um, any um, imagery or, or like um, deity, angels, anything like that in your bedroom. You don't want any, anything else looking on to what's going on in your bedroom for sure. So when it comes to family photos, we recommend that you can you put them in the east guar of your home because that's the family and uh, family part of the home. If you can't put them there, if 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 outside, like anywhere outside your bedroom is fine, just not in the actual bedroom is not recommended. Okay, the, this one is a massive one. Is the affirmations writing affirmations? Um, I'm sure you've all heard of um, the secret um, and manifesting things into your life. Crystals are fine, Jeanette. Um, I've got a lot of crystals in my bedroom. That's that's fine. Um, yeah, not an issue at all. It's it's literally um, you know if you've got angels or you know you might have a Buddha or something in there, remove them, take them out. Um, okay, so affirmations. 
this is what you're basically affirming. This is the relationship you have in your life. So some examples here of I experience happy, healthy and loving relationships. My partner is kind, patient and loving. You are the perfect person for me. So you say them in the present tense. So it's, it ha it's not about to happen. It might happen. You're affirming that it has happened. This is what's going on for you in your relationship, that you're, you're happy that they're the perfect person. They treat you with respect, whatever you want, you know, whatever you want from a relationship, this is how you will be treated. So you would put these in the southwest of your home or you can put them in your bedroom. Just put them in a drawer. They don't have to be seen. You don't have to know they're there. Just put them away somewhere um, and they will be, um, they'll be just there energetically for you. The vision boards are really, really important. Um, I um, recently uh, redid my love and relationships vision board um, after I realised that the previous one I had, which was really good, the man I had been dating gave me everything on that vision board, but that's all he could give me. So my new one has got, you know, a multitude of things that I require from the next man in my life. And I am talking to a man at the moment who keeps ticking off every single one of those things. So I'm like, I don't know what to do with him. He's like, so what happens there. But, yeah, you've got to be very, um, what you were saying before, Jeanette, you don't know what you want, very sure, very clear on what you are wanting from your relationship, what hasn't worked in the past, what don't you want to ever experience again, but what do you want to bring in? What have you realised that's really important now? that you need to bring in to your next relationship. So that's one of the modules that we actually work through in um, my course um, starting in February. So, um, yeah, it's it's incredibly important. It's, it's so, so valuable and it's powerful. It's so, so powerful. All right. So have we got any questions so far? Any questions, Jeanette? Um, I can hear you, by the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're right. I can hear you. I just don't know you know I can hear you. Uh, my situation's very sort of different. It's hard to explain um, where I'm living it's not my house. I'm just sort of renting a room, so I don't have a say with what goes in. Yep. So that's where I'm sort of caught. No, that's fine. So you can work in your space and we you can do intentional type um, feng shui. Obviously, it's better if you can do the entire house, but we work with what you've got. And I think you're the same, Claire. Uh, you can work on intentional stuff. So... Um, yeah, we, we just we, we grid up your, your bedroom into the nine um, squares and then you can place things in, in your bedroom. You couldn't do a full report on it because it isn't your home. But that said, um, like is it someone you know that you're renting the room off or? Yes, good friend. Okay. Would they be open to it? Well, I have done it because I am part of... Um... Patricia's group. Oh, okay. But I like the idea of getting in local. Yep. So, yeah, I've got many more questions to ask you later. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Um, yeah, so you can do intentional in your bedroom. I mean, obviously, you know what you're doing. Um, but, yeah, if, you, if your housemates, if they're open to doing it, we can certainly remedy the house. That's not a problem. Um, it'll only benefit everybody. Um, but, yeah, it, There'd be things you could set up in the room, um, you know, you know, everything I've just told you. If if this is what you're really wanting, if this is like one thing that you're really wanting in your life, then this is certainly all that all that advice I've just given. You can certainly yep. activate straight away. Excellent, um, thank you. That That'd be great. Yeah. Um, Yes, Steph, you need to do your 
you need to do your affirmations for sure. With the affirmations, do you have to write new ones every year or do they um, just keep continuing? I, I tend to do it every every year because things change. Um, right. Like I'm not the same person I was 12 months ago and I certainly want different things now than what I wanted 12 months ago um, and I'm more particular about what I want. So, yeah, I, I do them every 12 months. It's a little exercise that I do um, just to... I go around, I pull everything out because at the beginning of the Chinese New Year, I will pull my house apart and I'll do a really big declutter. Um, that's last year, I think I, I filled three or four willy bins full of stuff just from you know, pulling my kitchen apart. Um, so, um, yeah, you, you'll find things that just you, you might have left, you know, 18 two years, 18 months, two years ago that just aren't relevant anymore um, and then redo them and because things just change. Like I, I change my mind as much as I change my underwear. So um, I can never decide what I want to do. I'm very the most indecisive. I, I make really quick decisions, but I'm really, really indecisive about a lot of things. Um, so, yeah, I, I just make sure that I've... Um, I've really nutted down and that's why I redo my vision boards every year as well um and as soon as things change or as soon as I've achieved something um yeah I, I redo them just to cover everything out so um yeah certainly would do them every 12 months for sure okay um my house well the guy I'm sharing with he owns the house he's a real hoarder and he won't get rid of anything and that's what's making it sort of hard for me because I'm limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I remember we had this conversation. Um, yeah, it, it does make it very tricky if um, you are living with someone like that. Um, it's not like you can just, you know, you're married to someone, you quietly just get rid of a few bits and pieces here and there. Um, you just can't do that. Um, I mean, you can. Is that house remedied? Yes. It is. Okay. So typically when remedies are put in, it will actually make people want to start to declutter. So, no. yeah. Not him. But the feng shui has worked for him. He's got a lot out of it where I'm still waiting for my abundance and what I want to get out of it. But it is coming. It is coming. It 100% is coming. It's coming to everybody that, that wants it. Um, this year is going to be really good as well. Um, a lot of change this year. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's definitely a mindset thing. How is he older? Um, no, we're about the same age. Okay. Because it tends to be you know, like older men get very stuck in their ways and don't want to move anything on. Um, oh, come on, he's a male. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got a friend very similar. Um, yeah, you can only you can only manage your your space, your immediate space, really. Um, yep. And just check the remedies, um, just to see what's going on with them. Make sure they are all still working. Like, make sure that the you know the moving metal's still going. I mean, as I said, you'll get a new report um, in a couple of weeks anyway. Um, mm -hmm. and things will change again like there's massive change coming great yeah so like i'm going from having one two three four bars that need fire to only one that needs fire and i need metal everywhere else metal and water so okay. yeah, massive i mean i don't know what yours is going to be but yeah massive change this year so thank you hold tight i will <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so I've I've got a program I'm starting in conjunction with Chinese New Year um, for to help women um, bring love into their life um, and working on mindset, working on um, clarity on what you're looking for, um, you know how to say no and creating a vision for your future life. Um, so I've got this special there for today, or well, the next twenty four hours. Is six hundred and ninety nine. Now, Jeanette, because you have the report, I would have to talk to you about what um, what you would need. 
um, and the price would be different because you don't need me to do a report for you and you've already implemented. So it would right. just be the coaching aspect that I would help you with. Um, yeah. So if you're wanting to do that, let me know and we can certainly have a chat about that. Um, yeah, so the, the first two people that did sign up would get a um, two one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, just go through all the clarity and all the all the homework and all the groundwork and all the hard work because it is hard. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in that, um, there's the QR code to the page to buy. Um, other than that, um, yeah, I guess that's really it. Um, there's so much more. I could be here for hours talking about it because there's so much you can do. Um, but if you've got any specific questions, please do reach out. Or if you've got any questions now, please do ask. Have I know you're driving, Claire, but do you have any questions? I'll just I'll drop you a um, message, Claire, if you've got any questions on it. Um, this presentation will be emailed out to you, so you will have it to go through. Um, but I guess the, the big takeaway is, is, is decluttering, getting rid of the stuff that you don't need in your life. And it's very difficult. Um, you know, I'm constantly throwing things out. I think that, you know, I don't have anything to throw out, but I do. Um, it's a constant, constant thing. Um, you know, de decluttering under your bed, getting rid of things that you don't need anymore. It's super, super important. So I highly recommend just take another look at your bedrooms in particular um, and the southwest of your home. So you can find that by just pulling out your compass on your phone and just finding where the southwest and just give that a really good once over and a declutter. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I've really got. Um, so any other questions at all before I... Well, I'm definitely interested in talking to you tomorrow just to see what we can organise. Yep. If that suits you at all. Absolutely. Excellent. No problem I'm, pretty, at all. I'm available pretty much all day, so you've got my number, I presume? Um, I've got your details, yeah. I'll, I'll do you. Thank you. A message. Thank you. No worries, Jeanette. All right, well, Lisa, thank you for attending. I really appreciate it. Um, I will email this out to you um, in the next couple of days. And that's okay, Lucy. <laughs> um, and, yeah, well, any questions further on, please, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any of them. No worries, Claire. I'll drop you a message. Thank you. Okay. All right, thanks, ladies. Have a good night. Night.